Hi, I'm Katherine Norland. Now, I don't know if you believe in the law of attraction or the Bible's idea of sowing and reaping or karma, but to me, it kind of all has the same result. What you think about, you bring about. Or as what I like to say, what you say is what you pray. Now, is what you're talking about something you want to have in your life? Is what you're dwelling on something you would want to keep? Was that something you would pray? Instead, if it's not things that will bless you, then don't speak about it. Don't dwell on impending doom and possible disasters because what your mind focuses on, that's what you'll see. If you're looking for someone to do you wrong, believe me, you will find it. But if you're looking for the good in people, you'll find that too. That's why the Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, to meditate on these things. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Where you're looking is where you'll go. That's why the best driving instructors that teach precision race car driving don't tell you what to steer clear of. They tell you where your focus should be. They don't say, oh, watch out for that pole over there because then you're gonna go to it. Instead, they say veer left. Same concept in gymnastics. When you're on the balance beam getting ready to do a trick, the coach isn't saying, don't fall. They're saying, stick it, land it. If what you're going around saying, whether to yourself or to anybody else or out loud, if it's not something that you would pray, then you shouldn't be saying it. Would you ask God for what you're saying? No matter what I do, I always gain weight. Would you pray, God, please help me gain weight no matter how much I diet and exercise? Or, all men are cheats. Would you pray, God, please make sure that everybody I run across, every relationship I get in, can you please have them cheat on me? No, you wouldn't pray that. So be mindful and consider that everything that comes out of your mouth, is that something you're looking for? Do you want that attracted to you? Is, there's a reason the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So what fruit do you want to eat? Bitter, rotten, spoiled, or fresh, sweet, succulent, juicy fruit? This doesn't mean that if you only speak good, only good will happen. It's a lot more likely though. It doesn't mean if you only speak bad that nothing but bad is gonna happen, but it's a lot more likely though. So let's just be wise and let's control our tongues. I know it's not easy. James 3, 2 tells us, for in many things we offend all, but if any man offendeth not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle his whole body. Now, if we put bits in horses' mouths so that they may obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Now imagine if we could control our tongue, how we could turn our life in whatever direction we want to go, just like the horse's bit. What direction could we go in if we change the words we spoke? Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. What does the word of God have to say that's different than what you have to say? What are you professing over yourself? Is that lining up with what the scripture says and what God has to say about who you are? Speaking that you're a failure and that you can't make it, that you're a loser and nice guys always finish last? Because when I read the Bible, it says we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. So let's get our talk right and watch how our life follows.